when the internet went down earlier, I had some glitches where apparently my connection, for whatever reason, would not upload to the uh, settings for YouTube or whatever, maybe. And as most people know, that if you're a techie, you know, there could be a number of reasons that it was. And it could have been simple, it could have been complicated, it could have been any number of things that might not ever find out. So I worked on trying to use some of my software that, you know, I could record here and then upload and as usual the learning curve for that was challenging to say the least so it didn't upload correctly and wound up with a little tiny picture <laughs> it's a nice studio set but it's not a macintosh so anything windows is going to be pretty involved you know and you're going to have to work at it a little bit so i'll probably have to take some time to record and to identify what it is that i'm doing wrong and then choose to either go with that or just continually upload when there's time to YouTube. So, such as it is, one more time, here we go, with Spurgeon. All right, gee, I don't know if I've ever read that before today. It's going to sound so familiar. Wow, boy, talk about blessing my socks off. I think I might have this message down before the day's over. What are you saying, Lord? I haven't a clue, really. <laughs> That's what I love about do-overs is that you do them over. Just like your life every day is being done over, day by day, one way or another, you're going to make a mistake and you're going to go full circle right back to where you started from when you blew it until you learn to get through it without blowing it. <laughs> and then, praise the Lord, it'll be easier next time. You won't do those things that you would not and that which you would not you do and blah, 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 and reverse that order and you'll have it right. Spurgeon, whatsoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Jesus says, take freely. He wants no payment or preparation. He seeks no recommendation from our virtuous emotions. If you have no good feelings, if you be but willing, you are invited. Therefore, come. You have no belief and no repentance, come to him and he will give them to you. Come just as you are and take freely, without money and without price, without cost. He gives himself to needy ones. The drinking fountains at the corner of our streets are valuable institutions, and we can hardly imagine anyone so foolish as to feel for his purse when he stands before one of them and to cry, I can't drink, I don't have no money, because I have not the money to pay for it. However poor the man is, there is the fountain. And just as he is, he may drink of it. Thirsty passengers, as they go by, whether they are dressed in fusion or in broadcloth, broadcloth, do not look for any warrant for drinking. It's being, there is their warrant for taking its water freely. They don't look for permission. Warrant in the old days was the assigned permission slip to give you freedom to do something in a certain way. It was warrant for you to do it. It was freedom to do it. It was your choice to do it. It was permitted to do it. And so a warrant was an issuance of a bill of a decree that stated that you could do that. So it was kind of like having a driver's license. A driver's license would be like a warrant in King Jameth or in England. And it still applies today. And if you were in the law, then you would know what a warrant is. And it's not just for arrest. <laughs> It's an actual document. A warrant for arrest is a document for arrest. There you go. The liberality of some good friends has put the refreshing water there and we take it and ask no questions. We just drink. Perhaps the only persons who do get thirsty and don't drink of it when they drive by the streets and see the drinking fountains are the fine ladies and gentlemen who are in their carriages or they're in their cars where they're in their designer bikes, ooh, touchy, or on their <gasps> Harley? No, not a Harley rider. He wouldn't pass up drinking. We know Harleys are holy. Or those who are in their Porsches, or their latest 
I'm Mr. Green, so I've got my electric car, but you know what? I ain't stopping for nobody, because, you know, I got to keep this little putter going, because it's, after all, electric, and I'm holy, because I got my green machine doing its green thingy to save the world, because I don't want to save the people, because God knows that if we save the world, then, you know, somehow the people are going to get saved, too. Or are they? Maybe. Hmm, I don't know. But the point being is that they could come freely, too. But will they? What do you think? Designer bottled water? Designer jeans? Perrier? Oh, this is really good water. It is Christian sold and operated by our li local Christian ministry and we give all the money from this water to the ministry because, you know, we're just in it for God and God wants you to have holy water. Holy cow. Holy moly. I don't think so. It would be mean then, they think, to drink at a common drinking fountain, so they ride by with parched lips. Oh, how many there are who are rich in their own good works and cannot, therefore, come to Jesus. I will not be saved that way, they say, in the same way as one of those. I mean, that's one of those Pentecostal churches. God knows I might get infected or possessed. Oh, no, I don't want to go to a Catholic church. God knows they can't be saved. They're from the papacy, you know, and they got popes, and they got dopes, and they got this, and they got this, and they got that, and you know what? I don't want any of it. God knows, you know what? I don't want to see no Quaker sitting there, you know, giving me what for because he don't have no tractor when he's out there plowing with a horse, and I got my tractor, you know, and I can do my 100 acres when he can only do his 20 acres, so I don't want to get saved that way. Such proud boasters must remain without the living water. But whosoever will, let him take a little water of life freely. Jesus doesn't care about your preconceived notions, ideas, or formats. I don't care if you think that the gift of salvation has to come in a format that says the four spiritual laws, whatever they are. Ooh, wow, I'll bet that's in scripture. <laughs> Not. Or the... Oh my God, I must confess every sin I ever committed and remember that, you know what, the cross was the redemption and the propitiation and I got to remember to say that, you know what, I ask God to take over my life and I got to remember to say to God that, um, what else was it that the guy said I have to do? Uh, I got to remember what to do or I won't be saved the right way. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got to run up forward and tell people, I'm saved. I don't feel like it, but I'm saved. I'm saved. No. Get real. God saves where he is. The, the sinner on the cross who God saved had one last chance. Remember me? I don't know what else I can say, Lord. I don't know what else I can do. I can't get baptized sitting on this cross with you, but you know what? I can talk to you, and I can listen to you, and I think that, you know what? I'm pretty messed up, and I'm going to die. So remember me. Okay. Saved. That simple. What are you going to do? Make it harder? <laughs> yeah, you are. You know why? Because you probably, like most people, have listened to some pastor say, Oh, my 90% of the people that are in church that are sitting in pews aren't saved. Or you've read on the internet where, Oh my God, they didn't give them the right gospel, you know what? And they got these funny ideas, you know, and they got these weird old concepts, you know, and they go, Wee! All the way home like little piggies you know with their tails between their legs because they just don't know God will save to the uttermost now does everyone get saved how do you know yes or no Jesus gave a criteria he does make it a little challenging to be a Christian because he said that not all those who say they are Christians and have prophesied in my name and have done marvelous works in my name, and have cast out demons in my name, and have raised the dead and healed the sick in my name, are mine. Why do you think he would say that? There are those who would put a stumbling block and a roadblock in front of you so you can't see through in order to get to Jesus. Whenever a person does that, they are in risk of never once knowing the eternal life that God intended for them. 
and they may have looked like, and they may have sounded like, and they may have wondered like, they got Jesus, including me. But the truth is, when you seek God, ask. Go freely. He gives it to you. It's that simple. And then just walk with Him. Read a Bible. Talk to God. Talk like He's right here, right now, all about. Like He's right there in the camera. He is. You don't need a format and a formula. And you don't need to do four spiritual laws, six spiritual laws, seven spiritual laws, eight spiritual laws, 120, 365, 66 mitzvahs or 10 Hail Marys or one Our Father or any of the other garbage that everybody makes up because they want to feel like they're saved. <laughs> Only Jesus knows. So, get to know him. <laughs> <laughs> when you do, you don't worry about whether you're saved or not. You're worried more about, Lord, <laughs> what do you want me to do? God bless. Give it a rest. Go find Jesus today. And guess what? Tell him I sent you. Just kidding. Just enjoy God for who he is because he wants to meet you today. Even in Spurgeon and even in this devotional. <laughs>